I mean, let me just uh, synopsize what we um, learned in the uh, Metro Shroudland share. I shared them last night on Sunday. <coughs> share, I share them at the beginning of this year. I share them. So, Shlomo Amalek, thank you. Shlomo Amalek writes, Yishikani, and Shikais Pihu. This was a Bakasha of Shlomo Amalek that Hashem should. Kiss me, Minashika Spiho. So there should be this um, Mishika Pel Peh. And the uh, Medrash explains that he was talking about um, what began with Matan Torah. And Matan Torah, let's take a look maybe the Medrash himself. Yuda b'shem Rav Yuda bar Rav Simon Rav Yuda Rav Nachemia b'shosh Hashemal Yisrael Anoichi Hashem Alekecha. Here we were at Har Sinai and we heard Anoichi Hashem Alekecha. So at that moment, Niska Talmud Torah b'libam v'ha'yulamedim v'loy ha'yim shachet. With Anoichi Hashem Alekecha, somehow came the whole Torah. Everything that you need to know about Torah um, came. And they were learning and there was no such thing as shikha. Uh, as I said on Sunday, it's an unforgettable experience here, hearing HaKadosh Baruch Hu talking, and he's saying, they got it. Like, they got it. They got it all. And they never would have forgotten it. But, they then came to Moshe, and they said, Klai Yisrael came to Moshe, whoever that they is. Moshe Rabbeinu, Teyasa at Prozbion Shaliach Benoiseinu. We don't like the system of hearing Hashem, we are asking you to be the prosbian. A prosbian is like a broker. You be the broker, the shaliach benoiseinu. Shenemar, it says in the Torah, Mephorish daber ato imanu benishma v'ato lamanamus. So the Pasuk says that they heard anoich Hashem alikecha, and the Medrash says that they, after they heard anoich Hashem alikecha, they said, this is not working for us, you speak to us, you speak to Hashem, and then you speak to us. You tell us what Hashem said. We feel like we're going to die if we hear um, Hashem keep on speaking to us. Why would they feel like they're going to die? I don't know. Unclear. Now the Medrash says, um, so Moshe Rabbeinu is tired of talking. And then after Moshe, in other words, Moshe Rabbeinu continued with the SRS and Debrais. And they started to have shikha. Then they realized that Hashem stopped talking to them. So they had charata and they said, um, We want to hear straight from Hashem. And that's the shot in the Pasik. Yishakeni mi nashika is pihu. We're missing the nashika of a Kaddish Baruchu. Um, let it be like it was at the beginning of the Asaras and Debris. Amr Laham, so Moshe said, No, um, you've missed that opportunity, it's not for now. That'll be, says the Pasuk in Yermio, Shinamar Nasati is Tayrasi, Bikirbom, Valibom, Echtemenu. That there will come a time that um, I will give them the Torah direct, Bikirbom, Valibom, Echtemenu. Uh, I uh, pointed out that's probably the shaft in the Musaf Kedusha, where we say that there will come a time, when Mashiach comes, the Hu Yashmienu Shainis Lene Kolchai. There'll be a second Hashma of Hakarish Baruch Hu, and that's what we're all singing about on Shabbos. Hu Yashmienu Shainis Lene Kolchai. The Shainis, this time it'll be, everybody is going to be see that Klai Yisrael is getting this Nebuah. But now, meaning now at Har Sinai, it's not the right time. Ein zu achshav. 
Rav Nechemi says a, a little bit different is the pshat that when they heard lo yilacha that they didn't only hear the first commandment they heard the first two commandments lo yilacha um, neker yitzahar meglibam and all yitzahar was gone all desire for sin had left them bo yitzah Moshe they said to Moshe we feel like we're dead I guess when you don't have a yitzahar you feel like you're dead um, and they say you be the shaliach between us same type of thing um, so Moshe started to talk, and the same thing after Moshe started to talk, they said, no, Yishakeinu min shikos fiu, and Moshe Rabbeinu said, Einzo achshav, la silava, and he brings here the Madrash a different Pasuk, in Yecheskel, the first one was from Yerio, basi roisi esleva evan mibsarcha. In other words, um, according to both opinions in the uh, Madrash, Klai Yisrael heard the first two of the Aseris Hadibrais, they asked Moshe to ask Hashem to stop talking, <laughs> This is too traumatic for us to have Hashem talking. You be the shaliach. Moshe Rabbeinu said, okay, I'll be the shaliach. So Moshe Rabbeinu started talking. And then Klai Yisrael seems to, according to this matter, had charata. And they said, no, Yishakenim and Shikois pihu, that we want to hear Hashem. And he said, no, uh, you missed it. Uh, this is Alderach, the, the Gemara that says that Kisharatzisi um, loyratzisa. Achshoshat or Raitzani, and he writes. The Gemara says, such a thing by uh, Moshe Rabbeinu a number of times by the Sneh, other places that uh, when I wanted to uh, be Megala to you, you weren't interested. Now you want? I'm not. I'm not interested. I don't think this is. Uh, I pointed out on Sunday. It's not a Kodesh Baruch being mean or uh, Midas Hadin here necessarily. But the shot is that the, the fact that you couldn't take it, <laughs> the fact that you didn't want it, um, shows you're not holding. And if you're not holding, so you're not holding. So when are you going to be holding? Now you feel okay. We were pushed away. <coughs> We want to hold. <laughs> so, well, okay, you'll, you'll be holding when? When your Mio's Nevoa comes true of Nasatius Terasi Bekirba Malibo Mechtavano, or when Yecheskel's Nevoa comes true of Asirasi Slave Evan and Yvsarcham, then we'll talk, literally. But now we're not going to talk. So um, I, I just felt at the end of the uh, Shir on Sunday a total lack of clarity as to the sequence and the chronology of, of what exactly happened over here. But according to what we see in the Medrash, and I want to really just learn a little bit of Chumash with you to get it, to get it clear. But what, what we learned in the, um, in, in the Medrash was, what it seems from the Medrash is, that they, they were all standing at Har Sinai. And where was Moshe at this moment? You're raising your hand or you're pointing oh, up? No, up oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. He was up on top of the mountain. And somehow they got to Moshe and they said, right, so I think uh, Moshe asked, uh, this Moshe, our Moshe asked, like, uh, how, how they get to, how they get this message to him, you know, cell phone, what, what was the, uh, how they, no, we don't want to hear Hashem anymore, so Moshe started talking, then how did Moshe talk? So Moshe was Machadish again, which is sort of Mashman Rashi, that it was like Hashem amplified his voice, and somehow from the top of the mountain, we all heard, Confusing. Um, where were we? Where was he? How did this? Uh, but, there, but there is a precedent for us hearing his voice because in the whole um, Parshas Devar, he spoke supposedly to all and all of Pines Yeah, he wasn't on top of a mountain. True. Yeah. But I mean, you're saying two chidushim. Two chidushim here. One chidush is that he spoke to a lot of people. So there's this nest that you're, you're saying. I'm saying good. There was this nest. We know about this nest that Hakadosh Baruch Hu amplified his voice. Which I presume is where um, other religions got the idea from, you know, the uh, Sermon on the Mount, Lahavdil, and these kind of things. Always like this magnified voice. So, it, so you have to say that whatever it says by Yedaber Moshe Al Bnei Yisrael. So um, either you could say he said it to Aaron, to the Zakanim, and they, they spread it out, or you could say that he spoke and everybody heard. But I just want to um, just get a little bit of clarity. If you go to where this is all about. Now, sorry, I said deeper. So if you go to Parshas uh, Yisrei, Parak Yutes, it, it's um, maybe could I, um, this, uh, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm a little bit radical here because <laughs> I, what, I, what I really love to do in life is to try to, at least for the few minutes, forget everything you learned and everything you heard, all the stories you heard in Sunday school, and you know, and um, let's just see what actually happened from the uh, from the Chumash. It, it's, it's very difficult to do that. I, it's very difficult to do that because we have this whole picture and paintings, and and uh, we've been hearing about it from years, um, often from people that didn't know. Yeah. The, uh, so, um, if you, the, the the 
let me just tell you that the, the story of Har Sinai is not a long story. Um, it starts in Parakutes of Shmois. There's a hefsik of Elam Mishpatim. And then the story picks up in Parakhavdal Shmois. So there's two prokim in Parshas, Parshas Mishpatim, you know, like Matan Torah is half in Parshas Yisrael and half in Parshas Mishpatim. So in Mishpatim, it's a short thing in Mishpatim, in Parakhav Dalet. Um, I'm not going to learn, I'm going to do your test first, but I'm just showing you how it continues. Chav Dalet in Parshas Mishpatim says, Ve'al Moshe Amar Aleil Hashem Atov V'aren Adav V'aviyu V'shiva Mizikne Yisrael. And the Mepharshim will explain, which is Pashat, that um, Par- the story starts in Parakutes and ends in Parak but it's uh, the, the Pashtus HaMikra, sometimes you could say ain't Seder Mukdam or Mukhar Batarah if you have to, the Gemara says that sometimes, but the Pashat Ukshad is like it says in the Chumash, that's the, uh, like we don't have to say Drushas to make it fit in with our thinking, just uh, um, let's go in order, chronological order. So Parak Yutes, if you have it, it's, it's beautiful. Just to try to let's try to learn it quickly. So it was the Chodesh Hashlishi. What month is that? Sivan. Like now, tonight is Rish Chodesh. Let's say Shnei Yisrael Me'aretz Mitzrayim by Yoim Hazeh Bo Midbar Sinai. They came to the Sinai Desert. Um, meaning, you go out of Egypt, you're not yet into the Sinai Desert. You have to travel for uh, 46 days. Right to get to the Sinai Desert, uh, Yisu, right, wherever wherever it is, uh, um, it's it's not it's not uh, across the Nile. You have to you have to go a little, not across the Amsu. Uh, Yisu Mirfidim, they went from Mirfidim, they go and Midbar Sinai, they yachnu ba Midbar, they yichan Shem Yisrael, they get a and they came to the mountain, and there they stood next to the mountain. What was it? Why was this the mountain? Um, so it was the mountain because this was the mountain, the Pashat of Shad is this was the mountain that Moshe Rabbeinu was familiar with because this was already the mountain probably that the um, that he had the Gilui of the Sne. Because at the Sne he said that you're going to come back you'll worship me on this mountain. So they got to the mountain. And then it says Moshe Allah El Ha'alikim that was quick. <laughs> no Shavuos, no Mandar. Moshe is Allah El Ha'alikim so Moshe Rabbeinu was Allah El Ha'alikim, which means the positive shot is, this was when? This was on um, Yom Hasheni, Rashi says. Yom Hasheni. And it was first thing in the morning. So Moshe went up, climbed this mountain, the familiar mountain to him. And Hashem said the following. <coughs> say Ten Commandments. He didn't say Torah. He didn't say. He said the following. This is what I want you to tell. He went up to the mountain. He had a nevuah, and the nevuah was that this is what you should tell the base Yaakov and Israel. Tell all the men and women the following. Everybody aware that Hashem had this whole um, speak. <laughs> Hashem had the speak before there was the. Uh, sorry, is that deeper? Uh, what then? What was the other choice? Vayikra I don't know. Vayikra Hashem. Like every time it says Vayikra, whole saber Vayikra. As Hashem called him to the Holy Land, he had a, he had a uh, could, could have been bad, whatever. That was just a question of degree in Nebuah. How much of a Nebuah? Nebuah means Hashem spoke to man. Hashem spoke to man. Look, you saw what I did in Mitzrayim. I took you out on eagle's wings. I brought you here. Here is where? So now tell the people like this. We we have a covenant. Covenant refers to the agreement that I made with Avraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov. You want to be a special people. Um, from all of the nations, you say, well, all the nations, Kili Kolar, it's I own all the nations. So um, there was a Navua, Moshe Rabbeinu was Allah Elohim. By the way, I, m- I must mention that the Abarbanel says that he didn't climb the mountain at all. Uh, it says that Lashon of the Abarbanel, you can, you can look it up, and the Ramban brings it, and Ezra brings it. Allah Elohim bin Navua, meaning bin Machshav. 
he, he, although like him doesn't mean that, that um, doesn't say, in other words, it doesn't say Moshe climbed the mountain. He meditated and he, and, he, and he connected with Hashem. That's all it says here. It doesn't say that necessarily he was climbing the mountain. We're just making that assumption. Well, everything happens on top of the mountain there. It doesn't say that he climbed the mountain. It just says a Moshe Allah Kim. So I looked in the Rishonim. The Rishonim say that probably he didn't climb the mountain. He was just standing there at Harsinai. And at Harsinai, he had a Nebuah. Very important. Well, why is it important? I'll tell you. Vayavu Moshe, because there's no, we're not Harsina, right? Vayavu Moshe ve'yikra l'ziknei, tachtasar, ve'yikra l'ziknei ha'am ve'yosam l'flam, he called the Zekanim, so there's no great amplification miracle here, right? <laughs> he called over the Zekanim, we had a meeting, uh, you know, you're the leaders of the Jewish people, ve'yosam l'flam is called Dvarim ha'ela asher tzivahu Hashem. What was the, what was the tzivoy that he told them? Tell the people, in other words, spread out the following, that we have a bris over here, we have a relationship, we have a covenant, and I, I want you to be, I'm, 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 I took you out of Mitzrayim, you saw that, I want you to be a special people, I want you to be a chosen people, I want you to be an amsegula, amsegula mikolo amin. That's what the message is. So there was one message, which I believe, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm projecting my own amaratzas on you, so I apologize for that, but... Uh, um, this is a whole separate. Uh, this could have been enough, like enough. <laughs> like, you know, it's what? It's a, a, it's a idea who you are. I Meaning this this little story here that uh, most people like kind of like skip over as some kind of prelude to to the main story could have been a story unto itself. This is a great story. Like you know, we come, we get out of Egypt, we come to the mountain. Moshe Rabbeinu has a nevuah, tells it to the Zakanim, and the nevuah is, "You are a special people. I speak. <laughs> you don't need any mitzvahs. You don't need anything. Just a special people." Hmm? Information. Information, and uh, well, I mean, why, why are you being such a reductionist? It's not, it's not just information. You are not a regular people. Well, uh, other religions have been starting from much less. Uh huh. No, but I'm saying that this was transformative. What, 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 they heard this information from the Skadi, but now they. Okay. Okay. Well, that's information too. The phrase, the same, the, the There's a pris. Yeah. What, what's important here, I'll tell you why, no, 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 what you're getting at. What's important here is that besides for the whole story, I'm just going to give it a <coughs> besides for the whole story of Harsinai, Matan Torah, Kabbalah Satar, all of that, what's important is a side, which is not an aside, maybe this is the Iker, but another string which is going through this whole Misa, this whole Sipur, and that is that there's a bris. Bris. What were the luchos called? Shnei luchos? A bris. It's, it's, it's about, which is, that's what's important. What's important here is that it's all covenantal. Covenantal means that um, Hashem spoke to Avraham, and he said, Geri yezarach ha'baretz le'lohem, you're going to go through a Mitzrayim, and you're going to come out of Mitzrayim, hello, I'm here, I'm being Mekayim, my bris, we made a deal because of the Avos, because of Slus Avos, we made a covenant, you will be here forever. But you need to know, call it information, but you need to know what a bris is. By the way, a bris, important to know, is always a two-way, otherwise not a bris. It's not a command, it's a bris. A bris is that... Um, over and over and over in the Torah is ani mamirach avata mamirenu like like I am I'm going to lift you up and you're going to lift me up you're going to be the oil of life everywhere throughout Tanakh um, it's all about the bris it's all about this bris a bris nothing to do I mean not not talking about no oil was taken off here except for the oil of Halei it was there was a, a re um, establishment is the covenant that we talked about maybe you heard about it in Mitzrayim. This is what's going on here now. So it's preparing to say everything we're going to do following this night is for shame this bris. But why preparing? Preparing is mashma, there's something else going to happen. Not necessarily. At this moment, nothing else is going to happen. It's not a mitzvah. I don't have to, you don't have to. You don't have to. So, but, as you say, an important piece of information. This is the key of the bris. Maybe you think you're going to go back to Mitzrayim. Maybe you think the Amalekim are going to take you over. No. Right now, we are fulfilling the bris. It, like, like you know, I'll tell you what's bothering me about what you're saying. Like, let's say I'll tell you, our boys have Mashiach came. Interesting. <laughs> that, that piece of information. <laughs> so, like, so, of course, it's transformative. It's a, of course, it's a life changing. 
Um, and of course, you would have me institutionalized. <laughs> but, but, uh, but I'm saying, if somebody comes with, with that site, you can't call it like, oh, I read in the paper. <laughs> it's a Ela de Bris. This is the Bris. Ela Hadvar Masher de Daber Albanese. If I have a Moshe, let's go a little bit further, please. You have a Moshe of Yikos, it may all be Yosem and Pamus. Call Hadvar Mela Shir Tivahu Hashem, Mitzvah Tivahu Hashem Dar. The Yanu Kolam Yachtov, and it was at this point. The Kla Yisrael v'Yomru, and they said Kol Asher Diber Hashem Nase, which is the first half of Nase v'Nishma, and they said we will do whatever Hashem wants us to do. Nase, Kol Asher Diber Hashem Nase, the first half of Nase. Doesn't say Nase v'Nishma. Doesn't say Yidaber. It says Diber. I'm not sure they're talking about whatever mitzvahs they got. Uh, right? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Let's see. Moshe has Ha'am El Hashem. There's your bris, you see. Moshe comes back and he says, the people is a Nasa. They said Nasa. Now what? Vayyam Hashem Moshe. Moshe says to Moshe, okay, here's your instructions. You're going to. Can he wait and say, are you in? Yeah, are you in? And they said, they're in. Moshe Rabbeinu goes back to Hashem in some form of Nebuah. In some form of Nebuah. Again, it's not clear that he ever climbed a mountain at this point. It doesn't say you were the Chumash here. They climbed a mountain, and the Rishonim say he didn't climb any mountains. No mountain climbing at all. This was just simply uh, Nebuah at the bottom of the, at the foot of the mountain, or at the place of Hahar. The place. This was very significant, as I said before, to Moshe. The Har was very significant because this was known to be a holy place to Moshe. Okay, so you're in, I'm in, here's what we do. I'm going to come to you in the thicket of a cloud. I know it's interesting that Av is the same Russian that's used by the Akedah. They use a lot of times this thickness, right? The thicket. I want everyone to hear how I'm talking to you. Because the, the part of the bris is not just me, it's you too. You too. I want them to believe in you. So what's that? Hashem said to Moshe, "Vayagid Moshe es divrei ha'am el Hashem." What did the Yom say? Nase. Nase. He already said that, didn't he? But Vayomer kol Vayomer kol Hashem divrei Hashem nase. Vayoshev Moshe es divrei ha'am el Hashem. And now it says, "Vayagid Moshe es divrei ha'am el Hashem." So there's a chiddush here. Yeah, there must be something going on. There's many rashis over there. There must be something going on that's that's not written there. Okay. The Moshe could have carried on while the Skyrim went on their mission. Shemati Mehem Shuritzaynam Lishmaya Mimcha. I told them again, as Ritzok says, that they want to hear you. So it must be what's going on is that first they said, in other words, the first thing that Hashem said is, we've got a brisk going on here. The second thing he said is that there's going to be an Ava Anon and the people are going to hear me talk to you. Um, they're going to hear me talk to you. Apparently, says Rashi, Hashem said that, okay, I shared that with the people. And as Rashi says, Yagid Moshe, Bayom Hamachrish, Uhurvi Lachodesh, is Divrei Ha'am, Shuva Al Dabrzeh. Shemati ma'am shiritsoyim ritsoyinam lishmoya mimcha. This is very important for me. I heard from them that they do want to hear from you. They want to hear from you. Which is strange because Hashem said they were going to hear it. They just know that they were going to overhear it. Hashem said they were going to overhear it. I'm talking to. So what's the difference between. They're going to hear. But before he just said there's a Brits and they said Nasa. Yeah. Now he says there's going to be a Gilui. Right, and the people are going to overhear. Luthic. The people are going to overhear. But then, so Moshe Rabbeinu came back, listen to this Rashi. Shuvah al davrizeh, al davrizeh, I told them the tshuva, shamati mehem, shiritzaynam liv shmaya mimcha. Einoi doima shemeya mipiha, shaliach le shemeya mipiha melech. Now Hashem proposed, l'chatchila, I'll speak to you, and they will overhear. Moshe Rabbeinu, according to Rashi, somehow knows that, no, Moshe said to Hashem, they actually want to hear directly from you because they don't want to hear from a shaliach. It's not sure they don't want to overhear, they want to hear. Ritzoyneinu lirais es malkeinu. That's Lashon Rashi brings from the Mechilta. We want lirais, not nachazah. 
Leroy is Vokedu. Like, not only, so the new Chiddush here, again, we haven't got any mitzvahs per se, but we have a negotiation, like a, a preamble to the to the, to the big bits. So one of them is, you know, a, this, you're, there's a covenantal agreement going on here, right? Does this sound like a legal um, process, right? Am I right? First, there's like, uh, this is party one, this is party two. This is what we're deciding. Number two is, um, okay, they'll hear me, overhear me. And, and Rosh Rabbeinu goes back, they're not so good with the overhearing, they want to hear. We want to hear, right? Says the Torah further, Vayomer Hashem Moshe, okay? Vayomer Hashem El Moshe, Leich El Ha'am, go to the people, Vekidashtem Hayom Umachar Vechib Susim Laisa. Okay, for that, you need to make some serious preparation, and you have to make be, you have to be matured yourself. By the time the third day came about, they were nechaynim. They were in good shape. Because what's going to happen is that on the third day, apparently as per the request of the people, not as per her Hashem's suggestion, um, but anyway, you want to learn it. That again, there's no shmia here because they said returnenu liroi ses malkenu. They want to see. So now Hashem is going to be yered. Hashem le ene kol haam al har sinai. So is that what the chiddush is between pasuk tes and now? Pasuk tes is shmia. And here they're talking about Hashem says, "Okay, you can see me. Then you want to see me. Why can't you hear me?" Like, why does he change senses here? Vayar ha'om es ha'koylois. This is not Kabbalah, like a Pashat of Shat. From the Rambam in Tevis and Ruah, Perafes, so he says, Gan b'cham b'yamin l'olam, that's the whole raya for the Nebuah of Moshe Rabbeinu. So it's mashma that they did hear him speak with Moshe, then he said, and brings it. You don't need the Rambam, you're going to hear the Pasuk. He brings the Pasuk, right. So apparently, Apparently that <clears throat> that tonight of hearing from Moshe was a very it was a very big icker. <clears throat> to Hashem. Huh? To Hashem at this point. For us, in order well, to know that we should believe so, in the So let's let's touch up yeah. because I want let the Pasuk talk to you. Okay. The Balta Sa'am Saviv Lamar. I I you're you're right on it with the Rambah, but I just I wanna I don't wanna mm-hmm. I don't I, I wanna just see what the Torah says. <laughs> That's what Everyone gathered around the mountain. Hishamer lachem leimar. Bigbaltas am rather. You should gather everyone. Hashem said to Moshe again in a nevuah. As far as we know, this was just a nevuah betach tisahar in the holy place. So Moshe Rabbeinu gets a nevuah, speaks to the Zakenim, Zakenim speaks to the people. No amplification, no mountain. Ayom Ashlishi, then. We're going to have some kind of a thing that that by Yered Hashem Le'ene Kol Am Al Har Sinai. This did not happen yet. Um, and so Moshe, so Hashem says, "Vik Balta Sa'am." Here's the conversation going further. That's what they want. Vik Balta Sa'am Saviv Lemar. Get everyone to be around the mountain and tell them, "Mishamer Lachem Alois Bahar Nagoya Bekatseo." Okay, but don't get too close to the mountain. Kol An Nagoya Bahar Mois Yumas. They will die if I'm on the mountain. They will die. So Hashem is telling them about this Mosumas thing uh, of uh, getting too close. Don't get near the mountain. He saw Kol Yisakel, a Yorah Yirayim, Behema Imish, Loi Ichyu. A Behema is going to go stroll onto the mountain on Shavuos. <laughs> He's done. Like that's what's going to happen. Bimshoi Chayoyvul Hema Yalu Bahar. What does that mean, Yisla? <laughs> Somebody help me. Only when they hear the only when they hear the shot, they know that it's much of the once again to go back up onto the mountain. So right, so they're going to go back on the mountain and climb the mountain. What's the other here? Shoifer, I guess. Moshe says it's a shoifer. Ah. Im shoifer chayoyvol heima yalovar means a tekiya gedoyla. Vayered Moshe min hahar el ha'am. Now here, you already see that Moshe Rabbeinu was on a mountain. We don't know where on the mountain. To be to be clear, but vayered Moshe min hahar el ha'am vayikadosh ha'am vayichav susim loisam. He did a tahara process on the people. Vayomer alam hayu nechanim l'shoyes as yamim. You have three days to get yourselves ready. I'll teach you all isha. Stay away from women. No women. Why 
Why? You haven't, you could sort of just said the You haven't been up yet. Correct. That was my question. Right. <laughs> where, where is it going down from? Um, says the Ramban, if you're asking already, I'll answer. Um, there are different parts of the mountain. There's the Av Hanan. There's Vanigash El Harafel. There's the peak of the mountain, Arosh Har Sinai. Um, he, would, he was standing on some part of this mountain. I know this is different than what everybody learned in the Tater, but that's. But it does say that he was on some kind of a a, a, a height a plateau. Above, above plateau. He was elevated. Wow, unbelievable. Koilois, Brokim, third day, Anon Kaved. The cloud Al Hahor. They looked up and they saw the cloud. Kol Shoifer, Chazak Maod, Vayecher, Kol Am Asher, Bamachana. Chazal says that the whole mountain was shaking. The whole mountain was shaking. It's a phenomenon. Vayotze Moshe Sa'am, Likras Elohim in Amachana. Now let's get let's count the cup here. Where was Moshe now? Down. 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 Let's keep track. Right, Moshe's down. Vayotze Moshe es ha'am. Not that he went to the people, but Vayotze Moshe es ha'am. What is that? Do you want to translate that? With. He went right. Okay. Likra selakim. Let's go greet the Lord. Min ha'machana. Let's come out of the machana. Vayisyatsu. And everybody stood together. Where? Betachtis ha'har. So here is a story right now. We learned that we are a special people. We learned that we need to become Tahar for this experience, right? That that's what the Zakanim told us. And we said our response to that was, Kol Asher Dibar Hashem, Nasa. We'll, we'll do it. Hashem, Moshe Rabbeinu goes down. He, he, he comes, he brings the people closer by Yom Shlishi to the mountain. By Yisyatsu, didn't bring them on the mountain, but by Yisyatsu, they all stood. Their expectation is they're going to hear God or see Him. They're not uh, hearing because which, which is bad more. So far, they're hearing shofar and and it's cool. But in the Naase, they said kol atcher atchem diber that mishmashma that we're going to hear my or we're going to hear. But Hashem said that I'm going to show you. Real. Now, if you ask me, Sahar, you're all familiar. The problem with all of us is that we're more familiar with Chazal than with the Chumash. So the Chazal says, "Well, I made Shikafa Aleim Harka Gigas." So Toysus has a reasonable shot in, in Harka Gigas that this was such an, uh, um, a compelling experience that um, who's going to say, "Eh, <laughs> like, who's going to?" You know, this was this was like an unbelievable thing called Shoifer. The mountain was shaking, and I mean, this is huge pressure. So what the Goyim said later, as Toysus and Avodazar, the Goyim said later, Klum Kafiso Leno Harkigigis, what they meant is we never had such an experience. Not that you forced us, you were psychologically forced. This was a psychological coercion. Who's going to say no to this kind of a thing? But this was later. This, I mean, this was three days later than they already uh, they said Nasa. They already said Nasa. They didn't say Nar Nishma. Bahar Sinai, so here we are. Bahis Yasu Tachtizar, Bahar Sinai, Oshan Kula, Mibnashi Yard, Hashem Allah Baesh. Hashem comes down on Har Sinai Ba'esh. Ba'yala Shonai Kesh and Akif Shon Ba'yechrat Kol Ha'har Ma'ay The mountain was shaking. Hashem is there. It's fine. Ba'yikol Ha'shoifer Ho'lech V'chazek Ma'ay And here is really the, the, the Pasuk that I want to underline here for the, in the next... Uh, we're running out of time. Moshe Yedaber Ve'lekim Yananu Bekol Moshe Again, help me with the translation here. Everyone knows this passage. What? Moshe would continue to speak. Moshe Yadaber. Okay, I got that part. Hashem would amplify it. Hamsa. Lushi Tosta. Hashem, Yanenu. What's Yanenu? Answer. Answer who's asking me questions here? Yanenu. He would repeat. He would amplify. He would repeat. You're telling me Yanenu means amplify? What, what, right. Which word means amplify here? Oh. Yaan. 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 Yaan is to. Yaan. <laughs> Yaan asher. What's that? The other thing? That's with an olive. Yeah. Uh -huh. Fine. Oh, no. Uh, um, but he's answering us. No. 
Uh, okay, Let, let's. Um, Moshe Yedaber, Nachum, Yananu. Belikim, Yananu Bakol. So Moshe speaks, but Hashem is not speaking, he's doing a call. Call. And call to us. Call, show you, call. Kufa Blah. Right, right. Us. A little bit further, if you allow me. Vayer, Hashem al Harsinai, or Shahar. Hashem comes on Harsinai, or Roshahar. Vayikra Hashem la Moshe el Roshahar. And Moshe Rabbeinu is called to the Roshahar. Vayal Moshe. Where's the Roshahar? That's another one. Roshahar. Vayomer Hashem al Moshe raid. Go down. Hi, bomb. Penyarsal Hashem Lerez and Nachal Menor. If I don't trust them, they're going to touch the mountain. They're going to go on the mountain. They're going to all drop dead. Gama Koyhanim Ani Goshem Hashem Yiskadoshu Pen Yifrei Tzbam Hashem. It's not good. I don't. They don't get it. So Moshe goes up. He's a carbon oil of a yari. Moshe goes up. He comes down. First time he's up. Meantime he's with Klai Yisrael all the time. They're getting too close. By Yomer Moshe Hashem Lo Yuchal Am Lali Zahar Zinai. That's why Doi Semano Leimar Hag Belas Zahar V'Kidash Jai. They can't go up. Why can't they? Of course they can. Because it, with this experience, the Kavalim Harkigigis, you know, Taft to Sahar, with this experience, nobody's, nobody's not paying attention here. So Moshe's arguing with Hashem and saying, don't worry about them, they're not getting so close. Um, and then Moshe Rabbeinu, now this is important, so what is he telling them? Stay away. Stay away from the mountain, right? Don't touch the mountain. And now Hashem speaks. Where is Moshe? At the bottom, yes. Now, if this is not a chiddush to you, um, <laughs> but where, was the ten, where was Moshe when the Ten Commandments were given? Bottom. It wasn't on the top. He went up. Moshe says, Hashem says, go down. You stay with the people, move them aside. Now, we, went, we know he went on Harsinai. I'm not telling you, I'm not, I'm not perverse. <laughs> I know he went on Harsinai. But, uh, but, but at this point, he speaks the ten things. And then, let's get, we have the Ten Commandments. Skip, that's not important. <laughs> um, just want the narrative here. Go to Shvi, Perik, Pusik, Tezvav. The Ten Commandments are over. Everybody heard, everybody saw, everybody watched the mountain shake, and everybody stood at a distance. And then they said it Moshe, to Moshe, Whoa, 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 you speak to us, let's listen. Nishma. <laughs> okay, did they hear it? They heard everything already. What are, what are they? I am a Russian law, Malti Ro. She can find a lot of people who are not going to be able to do it. I am a El Ha Arafel. Now Moshe finally goes up to, they say, We don't want to hear from Hashem, which is kind of strange because. It doesn't say, but let's be clear. All it said was, I'm sorry, all it said was, Vaidaber Moshe Elohim, Vayoimer Alehem, then Moshe said, Vaidaber, I'm sorry, Moshe said to them to stay away, and then it says, Vaidaber Elohimus Kola Torim Ha'ela Lamar to who? We don't know, it's unclear. Vaidaber Elohimus Kola Torim Ha'ela Lamar, Ibrit Suzak. Right? Uh-huh. Laymor. That's how we touch in Hader. Azoy Tzuzog. Like, he, he gave them, he said, and he said to them the Ten Commandments. They said, Pasquazic Tesvav, we see everything, we watch everything, we, we, um, but we don't want to hear from Hashem. Moshe Rabbeinu tells them, okay. Moshe, and at this point, Vayamadam Mirachai Kamoshe Nigash El Haraf El Asher Sham Oelikim. So now, for the first time, after the Ten Commandments, after the Aser Sadibras, after the Nasa, it says that Moshe Rabbeinu went up for the first time, Moshe Nigash El Ha'arofel. The Arofel, Chazal tell us, is that's like Mamish the Shechina, where HaKadosh Baruch Hu is. 
into the darkness. It means darkness. He walked into the darkness of the cave. Disappeared up there. This wasn't him standing on the mountain. This was way up. He went up. So it means like this. Just to make it a big answer, it means something like this. That um, there was a Havamina that HaKadosh Baruch Hu should be Mescala to everybody. They said we're not interested in that. That's too scary for us. But they said it's also that's it's a So so but but the experience of Mamish going further than we're going experientially, f- further than the colos and the brachim and the and the electricity on the mountain and the lightning, and everything, further than that to go and to actually have a gilui of Hashem, um, we're not holding by it. So Moshe Rabbeinu is Nigash El At this point comes the Medrash in and says that. They told them, they heard already two things from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Shnaim echad shemati, shnaim echad, what's the last one of the Pasha? Shnaim shemati. We heard two. Rashi says one. One. Machalik is the metric. This Lamor, before the, the first Zibra, he brings the Machilk, he says they answered, no? They answered to each one. Okay, that's that's a sheet. We're, not, we're going with the measures. Can I, can I go another just a minute into Parakhav Dot Dalit Pasagalaf where the poor story picks up? And to Moshe he said, So where we have here in in Parakhav Dal and Parshas Mishpatim is a um, a Matthias of how everything looked at Har Sinai. By Yahweh Moshe, he's happy. Let's call it Dibra Alma. Let's call it Mishpata. By Yan Kolam, Kolacha. By Yemer, let's call it Dvar Masher. Dibra Hashem, Nase. So now we have Nase. So they already said Nishma. So it's really we should be saying Nishma and Nase. So the Nase and Nishma, right? Or Nase. They said Nase. Oh, they said Nase before also. I'm sorry. By Yichta Moshe is called Dibra Hashem. Yashkim by Boiker. Now let me let me just say one thing, and then we're going to have to learn this in detail on um, Arshuas. Session on Sunday. <coughs> but, um, what, what we need to understand that the, the uh, sikum of the Rishonim were that there's two possibilities of hearing from Hashem. There's the Kol Hashem and there's the Dvar Hashem. The Rambam says this is Mar There's the Kol Hashem, there's the Dvar Hashem. Vayaris HaKoylois. What Kuz Koylois? What Koylois? Moshe Daber Velakim Yanenu Bikol. As the Rambam says beautifully, Hashem said to Avram Avinu, Kol Asher Tayim Elucha Sara Shema Bekoilma. Beruach HaKodesh Shalom. The Rashi says also in Barashas. Kol is Ruach HaKodesh. A, a, a Nevuah is like this. A Nevuah is that hearing the Kol Hashem is um, an experience, not an intellectual experience. It's not that Hashem speaks with words. Mm-hmm. It's a Nevuah. All of this, everything we're talking about here is Nevuah. There's, there's calling, a calling. Nice. It's, it's, it's a, it's a sound. A coil is a sound. What would happen was that a navi, any navi, Yeshayo, Yermio, pick your navi. Yoel, Micha, Moshe. Moshe was the biggest navi. So a navi is getting the Dvar Hashem, and then interpreting it, or saying it over. With Moshe Rabbeinu, it was so clear. It was Aspaklaria Meira. It was so clear, but the other Nevi'im was Aspaklari Yisha'enim Ira. Ve'en Shtei Nevi'im Nistavim L'davar Echad. They're hearing it differently. The experience of Nevua, the Rambam writes in, 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 in the Yad, is, is like a near-death experience. It's not, it's, this is not an easy experience, a near-death experience. They were afraid. So the original plan was, I'm just giving a preview here. The original plan was, Hashem says, let me speak to all the people. They're there but have to so hard. Let me speak to all the people. Kol uh, Nevi'im. Alavai, Eldad and Medad said in Nevua, Moshe Rabbeinu said Alavai. If if that would have happened, there would have really been no great need at this moment for Moshe Rabbeinu Bechla. Like you brought us to the mountain, thank you, and we heard no. But they said we don't. The the experience of Nevua, actual Nevua of hearing Hakadosh Baruch Hu, like Moshe Rabbeinu is doing, we're not holding. We're not in the Madrega. So what happened? We moved to a new place. Of Moshe Yadaber, not Hashem. Hashem Yanenu Bakol. Poshut Shad is that Hashem gave the call. Moshe had this call experience 
this 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 coal experience, Kufa Lamed experience, and then he gave that over to the people. Moshe Yadaber, not amplification. Hashem Hashem was giving the coal. So here's like the like the um, the, the it's coming from a Kaddish Baruch Hu, and I'm articulating it to you in words. And Hashem Vayaminu Bucha, they believe that Moshe Rabbeinu was doing this correctly. Vayaminu Bucha So uh, how they got to that, but that was Hashem was said if they're not going to hear me, they have to know that you're the man who's interpreting it correctly. And L'chayir, they'll never be another um, Navi like Moshe. Why do I say L'chayir? <laughs> because maybe Mashiach uh, in, in some place the Rambam is nicer himself. Maybe in some areas Mashiach will be even a bigger Navi than Moshe, but not in Kabbalah Zatayr. When it comes to Torah, when it comes to this experience, so uh, all of this, I believe, um, according to the Pashat of Shat, happened Betach to Sahar. Uh, um, it happened Betach to Sahar that that um, Hashem started to speak. Moshe Rabbeinu was at the bottom of the mountain. Hashem started to speak. The people said to Moshe, "Whoa, this is this is like a, a near death experience. We're not we're not holding by such a thing. You talk. Let Hashem hear you. We'll hear to the voices, the sounds, and everything." But you do the interpretation. We, we can't have this experience. So then came the Aseris Hadibrais. After the Aseris Hadibrais, according to the Chumash, Moshe Rabbeinu is Nigash Ela Harafel. Moshe Rabbeinu goes, Asher Shom Hashem, which Hashem is there. What do you go there for? <laughs> what, what's, what's, but, but, what's, what's left to do over here? What's the job is done, right? They heard the Ten Commandments. So the answer is two things, both of them important. One thing is 40 days and 40 nights. He has to learn what all this means. You know, nice like signal, but uh, when he came down, finally, finally, is kol amishpatim. But more important than that, some say like the Zayar says he went up here to Tarsha about Pat. I'm not sure what that means, but I mean about Pat. More important than this, he, um, uh, in order for something to be a bris, Hazanish explains this by the way. In order for something to be a bris, it has to be written down, not an experience. A bris, a covenant, is written down. Moshe Rabbeinu went up to get the Luchos. The Luchos is not a written um, documentation, like a, uh, um, like a transcription of what just went on. What do we need Luchos for? The Luchos are Shnei Luchos Habris. Eila Divrei Habris. The Moshe Rabbeinu got the Luchos. This was the covenant. These were the stones of the covenant. When Moshe Rabbeinu broke the Luchos, he meant to say the covenant is broken. The Torah remains. Nobody became putter from Tyre at that time. He broke the covenant. When he went back on Har Sinai, and we went through a whole uh, Yom Kippur, he reestablished the covenant. It is all my version of the Pasuk. The, the, the stones had to do with the covenant. The, the commandments had to do with what we're supposed to do. Two separate things. There is no covenant and, and the, there's no covenant in hearing Hashem. That's an experience of Nevoah. So there was an experience of Nevoah, Betach Tisahar, and there was an ex- a covenantal experience, Be'arafel Ha'har, which Moshe Rabbeinu broke those. I'll tell you just the, 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 the one minute history of the covenant. He re established them on different terms. So, you're going to have to do some work now to the covenant. What does Psalacha mean? I get my part. <laughs> I get my part of the covenant. Where's your part of the covenant? So psal lachash nei luchas avon mukar about the stones now. Like there, there, there is a symbolism here in in a two way covenant. Yeah, you with me on that? Is a psal lachash nei luchas avon. The chasavti ala luchas as advarim asher kisavti ala luchas arishayim asher shibarta. I will re- this time. This time I'll supply the ksav. You supply the stones. Covenant. There's no such thing as a covenant that, that you know I'm not paying all the legal fees here. Like this is this is we have to both do this together. At the end of Moshe Rabbeinu's life, fast forward, um, by the, he, well before the end he went into the oil moye. What happened in the oil moye? Moshe Hashem Hashem Medaber Moshe Medaber Vikose. Uh, Moshe Rabbeinu is writing and writing and writing. He takes the Sefer Torah, 13 Sefer Torah, and he presents it to the. Klal Yisrael, one to each shavit, puts one in the Mishkan, and he says, here is your new Sefer Habris. So it's not about, there's the Aron, with the Asaras HaDibrais, and with the Shivrei Luchais, and then there's the Sifrei Torah, not for everybody to look at it, not, not as a uh, museum piece, but this is the bris. This is the bris. Eitz Chaim Hilam Achazikim Bav Sanchem Ma'ushar, this is the bris. When you look at the Sefer Torah, it's the bris. 
what, what's, what's important here is that we are a mamlechus koin and benam kodesh. It's not what's important is, of course it's important what it says there, but Ela Diver Ebri, the Chazanish says such an important thing. He says the difference between what was written in the Torah and Torah Shabbat Peh, so it's such an important thing. Um, think about this for a minute. Why isn't everything written in the Torah? Or why isn't everything about Peh? <laughs> Hey, what do we need a, a double, uh, you know, this Tarsh of Exam, Tarsh of Why is mixing us all up? You know, the, the answer is that, um, that what, what was written in the Torah, what's Bixav, doesn't make it derisive. There are many things that Chazal say that are derisive. What's written in the Torah is part of the bris. What's not written in the Torah is not part of the bris necessarily. It's You have to do it. It's part of the instruction manual. It's Torah. But it's not part of the bris. Hashem said to do it. You do it. You don't need, you don't need pigs. But it's not, it's it's the bris that actually says in the Torah. That's the, what it says in the Chumash, the words of the Chumash, are the bris. Stronger than that, that's our Sadibris. What's the significance? Why do you give us Ten Commandments if they're 613? The answer is bris. So, um, the um, Torah Tziv Alano Moshev um, so Gemara says in Makus Chof Gimel, Torah is Gematria 611. Shtayim zu Shamati, right? That uh, you heard to yourself, so that gives you 613. In terms of Torah, Moshe Rabbeinu ended up teaching the Torah. In terms of covenant, Moshe Rabbeinu ended up getting the Luchos and bringing them down to Klai Yisrael, and then the Mishkan HaEdus was Edus of what? The Bris. So what's important here, what I'm, what I'm being mechadish to you, if it's a chiddush to you, is that we need to put everything into different parts. It's extremely important to put everything in different parts. One part is the bris, and that was one complete story. As Chaim said before, whole religions could be based on that. Like there's the bris, you don't need any commandments, you don't need anything. There's the experience of Navua, and then Yishakeni, Minshika Spihu, that give us that experience of hearing Hashem, talking to Hashem. La said love, Moshe Rabbeinu said la said love. And then there's the experience of the, of the bris, of Navua, and the information of the Torah itself. What do we do, what do we not do? Which was everybody's Navua betach to Sahar. So like a huge chronological finish is that according to this, and the Ramban agrees with me, or I agree with the Ramban, however you want to look at it, um, is the Ramban is a raya to this, um, is is that um, this was all the the the, the Asaris and Dibrais in the order that it was given was before that was Maimed Harsinai, but it wasn't about Moshe Rabbeinu being on top of the mountain and screaming miraculously down to the people. If there was a miracle, it was at the one time that it says that the, the last eight Dibrais where Moshe Rabbeinu was being the interpreter or the articulator of the Asaris and Dibrais, and there it doesn't say he spoke to the Zakanim, and there Rashi says. Hashem Yananabakal, that he gave him a special koch to speak loudly. It's a minor miracle in the, in the uh, course, in the context of everything else that we're learning here. Okay, we need to finish the story on. Uh, okay, where, where's the the Chazan Ish is in the Chazan Ish in Yurideya. It's a good, it's a good um, maybe I will send that source on WhatsApp.